Welcome back to part 2 of the Procedural Rocks tutorial series. This is part of the Magic Market tutorial series in which we created the environment assets. So in the last part we set up some basic noises using attribute vops and we generated noise levels on our geometry. In this part we're going to be doing some cleaning up and turning this into an actual tool that can be used to generate rocks. The idea being that we can feed it any geometry and the tool will turn it into a rock which gives us a proxy, a high res and a low res. All the while giving us control by exposing all of the necessary parameters at the top level of the node. So let's get into it. Right, from where we left off last, we have our high res rock. Now this resolution is decent, but what you can do if you want to return some of the detail from your existing setup, so from this normal node over here, is you can actually drop a subdivide after your intersection clean right over here with a depth of two. So this gives you a lot of geometry. It's going to go into the millions of points. You can see 2.5 million. And then what you can do is you can ray and take this and plug your existing setup into here and then ray based on minimum distance. We can just hide guide geometry and you can rather use this. So this restores a lot of the detail that we lose when we do the intersection clean. So as you can see, it goes from this to this. Now, if you want to do that, that's cool. You can, no problem. Um, but really, it's up to you. You know, this does end up quite slow. You're working with a lot of points. So if you'd prefer not to, it's okay to just use the intersection clean. Right, so after we've added that ray node, what we can do is just select everything over here except the null and put it into a network box. The other thing that we're going to do is just go up to the top here and I'm going to set my display flag on my subdivide because I want to select all of these nodes and reference copy them. And I don't want the reference copy to run through all of that again. So just right click on the subdivide or any node that you have selected, go to actions and say create reference copy. This will create exact copies of these nodes over on the side and you can see it says reference from subdivide 2, reference from normal 1, reference from large facets. So all of these are referenced and what that means is if you make a change, so let's take a look over here, right? So you can see that these are currently matching but if you make a change to your large facets, so let's just change the offset, you'll see that it does the same for the one on the right. So that's all that the reference copy is, it's just a exact copy over on the side where it finds the values on this side and references them in. So what we can do that's quite useful is just remove all of the hardware intensive stuff. So remove this intersection clean over here. We can remove this subdivide and we can remove the intersection clean, the subdivide and ray at the bottom. So it gives us this, which is a very messy piece of geometry. And the other thing is that after our base flatten, we end up with some stretch geometry. So we're going to just remesh over here to 0.015, right? And then we can run all of these things and we have this. Now I'm going to clean up these intersections using a bit of an intersection analysis method. And the reason I didn't use this earlier is because I don't necessarily like the results that you get from it, but it is a decent way of removing intersections. So let's do intersection analysis and plug the normal node in here. It'll give you some points, right? These are all the intersecting points. And what we can do over here is just drop an attribute wrangle. And to all of these points, we'll add an attribute called weight and we'll make it equal to one, right? Then we can transfer that attribute over onto the geometry. So we take our geometry and transfer this weight attribute over. So we could just choose weight over here and we'll decrease the distance threshold to a very small amount. And if you want to see what that weight looks like, you can drop down a color node and do a ram from attribute on weight. And so you can see that it's still quite a large area, so you can decrease it, something like that, just so that these areas of intersection are kind of covered. So 0.05 looks good. What we can do with that is drop down an attribute blur, don't pin border points, and blur based on weight. Increase this over here, and then drop down a new normal node to clean up our normals afterwards. Right, so we can actually increase this slightly to about 0.075 and that should do a good job. So now we have this, you know, cleaned up piece of geometry 
And this is our proxy geometry. So if you'd like, you know, on this remesh over here, you can decrease this even lower to give you some better results. Now, the cool thing about this is that it is an exact representation of our high res geometry. So if we take a look at our display geometry that takes very quick to calculate, we can see that it matches our high res geometry. So low res, high res, and they're both quite similar. So this allows us to do some look dev. You know, now we can actually change our settings without necessarily having to wait a long time for this to figure it all out. So yeah, there we go. Just a few minor tweaks. Cool. So we can now add another null. And this one over here, we can just call proxy geo out. Right, so once we have our proxy geo, the only thing that we really need is our low res geo. So to do that, we're going to keep it simple. We're just going to do a remesh of our high res. So we can grab this normal node over here and just plug it into our remesh. So the one before our intersection clean. And we're going to remesh to about 0.05. And this is also dependent on how low res you want to go. Um, I think for the size rock, it will give us about 5,000 points. We're also going to increase our iterations to three and our smoothing to 0.5. That'll just give us more evenly spaced triangles, which is just better. So we can remesh, right? So we just have the remeshed version of our rock. And you can see that our triangles are evenly spaced, which is nice. So what we can do from here is do a UV auto seam. What this does is it generates some seams and you can see here the splitting is curvature based. If you increase the grain tolerance, then it will create less islands. If you decrease the grain tolerance, it'll create more islands. What we can do with that is use a UV flatten and taking the seams that this creates, we can put it into the seams of the UV flatten. And if we press five on our numpad while hovering in our viewport, we can see our UVs. So our UVs are currently overlapped. Let's do a UV layout to fix that. And that just fits them all quite nicely. We can increase the grain threshold on our UV auto seam to about 0.2 or a bit lower 0.15. And that will split this a bit differently. We can go back to our perspective viewport with either numpad one or clicking on our UV view over here and going to perspective. And you can now see that we have 3000 points. It now also has a UV attribute on it. And we can do a UV quick shade if you'd like to take a look at what these UVs look like. So you can see they're decent looking UVs and this is procedural. So that's the big thing about this is that when we create variants of this, when we create all of our variations, we don't want to have to tweak this and you know input new values. We really just want this to run and procedurally generate rocks that have UVs auto generated. And this is a great way to do it. We just auto seam, UV flatten based on seams, then UV layout. So that's all we need to do for our low res. We can then output that with a null node as low res out. Cool. So now that we have these three, we can once again put them into network boxes. This will be low poly. This will be proxy. And this on the left will be our high poly. So now that we have that, we can actually put all of this into a single node. You can click and drag over all of this and just put it into a subnet. So you can press shift plus C or click on the subnet icon. And there you have it. It creates a subnet for you. We can call this rock generator. Now, what is this going to output if we choose to output this? Well, it's going to output whatever we have our display flag on. So a better way to do this and a way of setting up three different outputs is to use the output node. So go in here and drop an output node. Plug your high res into that, hold alt, click and drag. You can create one for each of these. So now you'll notice that it says output index. Now output index, the default is zero. So if you have this node selected, it will show the output index of zero by default. We would like that to be our proxy. So make your proxy output index zero. Then the high res can be index one and the low res can be index two. Now, if we jump up a level, you'll see that by default, it shows you your proxy. We can also just drop some nulls so that we can have each one set up here. So we can have proxy out. We can also have high res out and we can have low res out. 
Now, the other thing that we'd like to do is expose the geometry that's getting fed in. So if we go up to the top over here and we don't want to use the sphere anymore, we can replace it with sub network input one. And then when we go up a level, it will now require an input. So we can take a sphere, set it to a polygon mesh, and then just plug that into the first input. And once again, you can see we now have our proxy. So you can make changes to this and it will change what you're outputting. So this is the proxy. If you want to see the high res, you just set your display flag. And there's the high res rock. And of course, it will do the same for your low res. And once again, your low res has UVs. If you UV quick shade it, you can see. Once again, it has procedurally generated UVs. So this is cool, right? This is now working as we'd expect. The only thing is we have to actually dive inside of this node if we want to make changes to it. So let's fix that. So make sure to save your file. We're going to now start working on this node. Let's select our rock generator and edit the parameter interface. We can click and hold shift and click on all of these to hide them, make them invisible over there. We don't need any of those. We can apply and let's dive inside of our rock generator. So from here, there's a few things that we want to move over to the side. Firstly, our large facets. Our large facets, we want all of these over here. So we're just going to click and drag each one. Amplitude, min, max, frequency, and offset. Once you've dragged all of them over, click on one, hold shift, click on the other. And we're going to right click and say put parameters in new folder. We're going to call this folder large facets and we can apply and accept and i'm going to show you what that does so if we go up over here on our rock generator we now have access to those values so we can now adjust these values from here which is really cool we can adjust the offset from here and end up with different variations of the rock so Let's do that for the rest of our values. So once again, bring up your edit parameter interface, double click on the rock gen. And the next thing that we want is our small facets. So go over here and we can just click and drag each one over and make sure not to put them in the existing folder. You can see by the indentation that these are further in, these are outside of the large facets. So select all of these. Once again, right click, put parameters in new folder small facets. Then we can go down to large stepping. We'll do the same over here. Once again, clicking on the label of the parameter and dragging it over. So stepping, amplitude, frequency, offset, min, max, and roughness. Click, hold shift, click on the last one, put parameters in new folder. Once again, this one will be large stepping. And then we go down to small stepping, do the same. Once again, drag over. Click, hold shift, select all of them, put parameters in your folder, small stepping. And we go down to cuts and we do the same thing here. So cut threshold, amp, frequency, offset, frequency, and offset. So over here, we're going to do this one a bit differently. Click, shift, select all of them, put parameters in new folder, cut. But we also know that frequency and offset, these first two, are actually coming from our unified static noise. So let's put those two in a new folder. And we'll call this folder unified noise and then we'll take the other frequency and offset put them in there and call this one turbulent noise and so now that we have all of this set up what we can do with this is we can actually change how all of this is shown on our node right so we have large small large stepping stepping cuts and there's other ways to display this which you might prefer so if you go over to your edit parameter interface you can make it so that this is a different type of folder. So I like these as tabs, but say perhaps you want large facets and small facets in a new folder. You can put them in here. You can call this one facets. 
And then you can do one for large stepping and small stepping, put those parameters in a folder, call this stepping. Then when we apply, you'll see that we have cuts, facets, stepping, right? But what happens if you would like these beneath each other instead of next to each other? So large facets and small facets, one underneath the other. You can do that if you go over to these over here, click on your large facets and small facets. And instead of having them as tabs, you can have them as simple. And then it just puts them into these two little boxes. And that's quite nice. You can do the same for large and small. And then you can do the same for the cuts stuff. So the unified and turbulent noise. Then we can just change the order. So perhaps you want cuts to be last because this is the order that it was done in. So facets, stepping cuts, just click and drag. Apply and accept. And now our rock generator is nicely set up. So now we can make all sorts of changes from here, which is cool. And another nice piece of functionality that we can add is actually a transform node. So if we go back to the top here in our geo prep area, we can add a transform node and right over here, just add this transform node, go up a level. And what we can do is edit our parameter interface, dive inside. So all we're going to do is grab the scale from our transform. So let's grab the scale, drag it over. So perhaps you want it once again in its own little box. You can put it in a parameter folder and you can rename the folder to something like geo prep. So you can add more stuff to this if you want. And when you have something like that, you know, apply and accept. And I'd actually like this to be above, not its own tab. So we can just make this simple. Cool. So now we have geo prep up here with the scale. So now if we want to change the scale of our input geometry, we can just put something like 0.5 and we end up with a flatter rock. And we have all of our values now exposed. The cool thing is we can now take this into something like tops and tops can feed values into here to randomize this for us. So we don't have to do this by hand. It can do it for us. Before we get to tops though, we're going to do some texturing stuff. We're going to bake out displacement maps and that's all quite cool. So we're going to be doing that in the next part. In the next part, we're baking out displacement maps from our higher res and applying it to our low res. So once again, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this part. We're going to be going into more interesting things now. This was all just kind of SOPS based stuff. These things are kind of open to interpretation. I do hope you kind of picked up some techniques from this though. Uh, maybe there was something cool that you found in here. So until next time, bye.